All right, welcome. Another update coming up. We got the Lafouche Parish President Archie Chesson uh, on the line. And Archie, just to let you know, we had our first sports on the bayou yesterday. We didn't have an audience out here, but I did make the comment. I said we would have loved for Archie to have been here, but uh, he's got bigger duties. So next week we're going to get you in, and we'll do a live update during the show. But how's it going, Archie? Yeah, things it's it's like we've we've been talking about Martin. It's it's baby steps every day um, with water, with energy. Um, we're still struggling with uh, things like the blue roof program, with things like sheltering. Uh, but one of the good things that I'm hoping by Friday we saw about 85, 86 people in a shelter up in Assumption Parish, uh, most of which are from South Lafouche. So we're going to be transporting those folks from uh, Assumption Parish's community center up in Napoleonville down to the La Rose Civic Center. It'll get those people closer to their home, closer to their families. Uh, we've been working very closely with them to try to do damage assessments on their homes to figure out if they could go back, what their status of their home was, things like that. But we're still pushing very hard for some sort of long-term sheltering, uh, whether that's FEMA trailers, uh, what they call direct housing, which is these modular homes that they can bring in and drop on your driveway. Um, we have a call with Congressman Scalise and FEMA tomorrow uh, to try to work through some of those issues, uh, hoping to get it here sooner rather than later. We know it's going to take a a, a couple of weeks and, and we can bridge that gap with sheltering and family and friends for a few more weeks but what's not going to be acceptable is kind of what we're hearing and that's you know 60 days or so before we get some of those units here um so we, we mentioned it this morning on our call with the governor's office uh we mentioned it every time we get on the phone with the governor's office to make it clear what our what our priorities are um but that's the last piece of the puzzle overall debris cleanup is is going pretty well we're moving about it didn't work yesterday because of the, the, the heavier rains but they're out there today picking up debris uh, we're moving about 30,000 cubic yards a day, which is a good number. Um, opening up more of these debris sites where we can haul it to and burn it or chip it uh, and dispose of it that way. Um, water continues to, pressure continues to rise as the south water plant here in Lockport got on permanent power. I'm still hopeful in the coming days that we'll be able to lift that ball of water advisory for the rest of the parish um, going down to the southern end. Getting water to Port Fouchon, Chet and his guys are doing a great job. Uh, the first offshore vessels were loaded up last week and headed out for the Gulf uh, to get that energy production back up and running. Uh, so overall, it, it's baby steps, but the momentum keeps building every day. It's a little less chaotic here in the EOC every day um, as things start to, to work out. Our pod sites in um, Golden Meadow, La Rose, Grand Bois, uh, Lockport, and Choctaw Bayou Blue are all still open. Um, some of those areas you're gonna start to see the close this weekend. Uh, the pods in, in Grand Bois and Choctaw uh, are gonna start to close this weekend because they're getting some sort of power back there. Uh, we're going to leave some water assets down in, in Grand Bois because we know they still don't have some potable water uh, or they still have water issues. Uh, they're fed from Terrebonne, so they're a little bit different than some of the other bayou communities here for us in Lafourche. Uh, but overall, we're, we're we're better than I thought we'd be on day 17, I think it is, whatever day it is. But, yeah, I uh, keep we're forgetting what day it is. I mean, can they chip, uh, you were talking about chipping some of that pine trees, and can they make, nobody should even have trouble finding mulch when they go to redo their <laughs> yard, right? No doubt, no doubt. And in some cases, you know, depending on where these debris sites are, are at, we, we it's a little bit more expensive to chip it, um, but we don't want to burn in those areas because there may be houses close, there may be some neighborhoods. Depending on where the wind's blowing that particular day, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to, to chip it and burn it. We can get dispose of it a lot quicker with chipping it, um, but it's a little bit more expensive because of the machinery. But we're working with our debris contractor. Uh, we had a good operations meeting with them this morning, um, trying to figure out the zones they were working in. Uh, we're going to start to release some data uh, every day about the zones they're in, what neighborhoods they're in, based on a, a GIS portal that they're working on. Um, so we're going to be starting to push out some more information on that every day as well. Let me ask you, and this may be a state uh, hospital or state health department question, but we're getting a lot of calls and a lot of comments about nursing homes. Are you hearing that on your end? Yeah, so we've there's a, there's a litany of protocols a nursing home has to go through uh, to be able to come back and reoccupy their facility. One is stable health care. Um, they have to have a stable hospital in their area. So for Osher St. Anne and Lady to see those nursing homes in the central and southern part of the parish was a little bit more difficult because we had to set up some uh, DMAT, the mash tents you see out in the front yards uh, because of damage to their facilities. Um, they have to have fire marshal inspections. Our CBO has to go in there and do an inspection as well as the state nursing home licensing board. So uh, we're working very closely. I think the last one we have left is the Broadway here in Lockport. Uh, so we're working with them hopefully to try to get them back uh, in on Monday. The fire marshal changed a little bit of the rules um, earlier this week, and they want them to have permanent power there before they go back. Uh, so we're hopeful that most, some of the Lockport community comes back on uh, today or tomorrow, which would allow the Broadway to move back in uh, after doing some some a little bit of damage repairs uh, early next week. 
And of course, the tragedy we saw in South Lafourche that nursing home lost its license. So I'm not exactly sure when they're going to come back. The state is still handling that investigation. That's exactly what happened up in Independence when they evacuated. Um, so we're going to we're going to work with the state as best we can on that. And uh, when they're allowed to come home, if they get a license back, we'll we'll deal with that then. Well, I was pleased to hear. We got about a minute left. Pleased to hear from Chet Chesson this morning. He told me they're loading, they they getting things rolling. And I know as the parish president of Lafouche. You know, I, I said it to Philip Martin earlier, the only way you could be normal sometimes is to start acting normal. Well, that's that's a big shot uh, in the arm for Lafouche, isn't it? It is. You know, seeing those guys loading up those vessels last week, seeing the way their tenants got back in, um, you know, there's a, there's a huge brotherhood between me and Chet uh, because they are the economic driver in a lot of cases for Lafouche. Uh, but the nation, you know, every hour that the place is closed, it's a $500 million impact to the nation's GDP, not to Lafouche, not to the state, but the nation's. Um, another great, great message we saw this morning was from Jared Martin, our superintendent here in LaFouche, talking about when schools might reopen. That's a huge piece of normalcy for people, right? Kids get back in their routine. We're continuing learning. Um, I know that I can't wait for my kids to go back to school and get back into that normal routine, uh, even though my wife's doing a great job teaching them at home uh, in the off part. Uh, but seeing that message from Jared, too, was just another glimmer of hope that LaFouche is coming back. We're going to build it back better. We're going to be stronger, and we're going to get back to normal sooner rather than later. Uh, we appreciate what you're doing. We, we thank you for the updates. And uh, I love the color changes in your shirt from fuchsia <laughs> to orange today. So you're looking bright over there, Mr. Parish President. I think we might shoot for purple tomorrow. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. There you have it. The Parish President of Lafouche, Archie Chesson. We'll take a break. we got a lot more.